um, a survey that at, that ranked what factors uh, are, you know, how do they how do they affect voter um, uh, confidence, confidence, the voters' confidence in it, and and the number one factor that uh, instills the most confidence is whether or not your candidate won. So if your candidate wins, we got a good system. If it doesn't, well, then we got problems. But I think the key uh, going forward is to uh, try to, uh, you know, make, a, make, make it as transparent as possible and include as much of the citizenry in the process as possible as we go forward by, uh, with, uh, with our election processes. And with that, I will be happy to have a discussion with uh, Con Senator Conrad about mail-in ballots. Okay. <laughs> Are you going to do that now? Well, sure. I, I, I'm open to your questions. Sure. Oh, Senator Conrad. Thank you so much, Chair. Thank you, Senator Holcroft. And I did hear your uh, opening on my way in. I'm sorry I wasn't here for it in person, but um, you might have heard some of the dialogue and previous testifiers about, you know, there seems to be recent concern, and you touched upon it in your opening, around the rise of vote by mail, particularly during the COVID pandemic, and then since, actually, a lot of Nebraskans and Americans have decided to continue voting by mail since that point in time. So my question to you is, do you have concerns about vote by mail generally, or just for certain voters? No, generally. I okay. think uh, it's just that we have increased the volume or the percentage of people who are voting, and that just makes us more vulnerable to mm -hmm. opportunities for fraud. Um, so uh, on that same logic, then, do you question the results in the 11 or 12 counties in Nebraska that have had all vote-by-mail elections for quite some time? Well, we don't have any any choice in those matters. I mean, that's the way we have to conduct those, and, and, and they're generally pretty small in numbers. I mean, we're talking... 50% uh, of uh, Douglas County, 70, 80,000. How many people are voting by mail? Oh, probably 125,000. 125,000 people voting by mail in Douglas County. But how many of those those counties in western Nebraska, what are those numbers looking like? So your concerns are solely related to volume? Yes, because I think that, uh, I mean, from the time, well, think about this also. If you vote at the ballot, or you go to the office, you know, you can vote at the election commissioner's office 30 days, the yeah. same period you have for early voting by mail. You can go, you can show your ID, they can verify the photo ID. Okay, so, and the same thing at the ballots. Give me your ID, look at it, look at the person, and verify it that way. With mail-in ballots, you don't have that, that feature. Your only feature for confirming the voter ID is that signature. And it's an eyeball signature. And I can tell you, in the military, we would never accept a, a signature as a, as a form of ID. So that's my biggest concern, is um, we go through all the rigor, and, and the people spoke. They want voter ID, photo voter ID. Uh, and we're, we're applying that, and it works at the offices and at the, um, at the, at the polling places. But we're not really using photo ID when we do mail-in ballots, and that concerns me. Okay, so you don't have a concern about vote by mail for military voters? No, no. You don't have a concern about vote by mail for rural voters? No. You only have a concern about vote by mail for metropolitan voters? I. I would like to go back to a no excuse. I mean, in rural, I mean, we don't have enough poll people. The reason we're doing it out there is because we have to do it out there. I'd love to do away with uh, mail-in ballots out in the rural areas if you could find enough poll workers to be able to man the polls. But that's the reason we do uh, mail-in ballots out in those areas. Um, I, don't, I don't know if the history <laughs> would back you up on that, but okay. Um, but as far as, you know, we, we got away from this, you had to have a valid excuse. And being in the military or being uh, in a nursing home or being, you know, in surgery was a valid ex ex uh, ex uh, excuse. And you could request a ballot and list that excuse. And that's what I think we ought to go back to. I am not uh, proposing to do away with mail-in ballots. I am proposing to go back to a... You need to have a valid excuse, and 
and, and the best thing to do is vote early and go to the commissioner's office and vote early. It's not, it's not anything different. Okay. So um, you would have preferred that Nebraska not adopt no excuse absentee balloting almost decades ago. Yes. And you've brought legislation to change that during your time in the le legislature? In my two years here? I have not yet. Okay. And your And I don't know that I will. Sure. Okay, that's why we're here. That's why we're asking the questions. Uh, and, uh, and, and we'll continue to ask those questions, and then we'll sure. decide whether or not we need to bring something forward. So your concerns about no excuse vote by mail that's been in place in Nebraska for decades, um, maybe two, maybe longer, exact number on that I don't have off the top of my head, is, is the primary concern that you're bringing forward today. Um, I think and primarily, I guess, in metropolitan counties, not for overseas voters or rural counties. Um, but how, how would changing that aspect of no excuse or excuse vote by mail, how would that enhance voter integrity or security? Because it forces people then to go to the election commission office to vote or go to the ballots where they have to produce a photo ID and people can look at the, at the ID and look at the person. Okay. And, then and that is a, to me, that's a more secure uh, way to conduct elections. Okay. Are you aware of widespread voter fraud in Nebraska? I am not. Okay. And I don't remember off the top of my head, but did you vote against the legislation to implement voter ID and enact, enact the will of the people that this committee led forward in the recent legislation? I voted for sessions? voter ID, yes. Yeah, okay. Did you raise concerns about how voter ID was being implemented at that time? I don't remember everybody's floor speech. That's why I'm just trying I didn't. To I think it was raised, and I agreed with the issue, but... Um, it was an improvement over what we've done in the past and what we had in the past, and now we have another opportunity to make it even better. Well, and I understand, Senator Hol Holcroft, we all have to make challenging um, decisions with our vote. Sometimes the good outweighs the bad or vice versa, and it's rarely a perfect piece of legislation that, that works its way through, but I, I just want to go back and revisit that. So. Um, do you, Senator Holcroft, plan to respect and honor the results of the upcoming November election, regardless of who wins? Absolutely. Okay. I mean, I, uh, when I started in my opening statement, I said I have confidence in the Secretary of State and the systems that we have in place. Okay. Uh, but that doesn't mean there can't be some improvements. I mean, I have constituents who have some general, genuine concerns about Right. Uh, about how things are done with um, all across the board, across the four areas that I'm looking at. And I don't, I don't necessarily agree with everything they're saying. I agree with Wayne. Let's see the, uh, well, let's, you know, bring me the evidence. Bring me the evidence, and I'm happy to take it forward to the Secretary of State and, and get it evaluated. But there are some things I, uh, that I have, have, mostly in the last five years, Yeah partly because of COVID, partly because of voter ID, uh, that we've kind of gotten out of whack as far as some of, uh, you know, in, in particular the vote in, the uh, mail-in voting and being getting to the percentages that we're talking about in D Douglas County. I think there's also a piece to consider is, it, it really it ramped up during COVID, but we seem to be leaning forward now uh, as election commissioners to encourage early voting uh, by saying to mailing out to all the registered voters this is your here's an application for early voting would you like to do it we're also getting a lot of other organizations that are are uh, encouraging early voting um, that to me is, is, is as I say it just opens us up I think to uh, to more opportunities for fraud okay and then just two final questions there so you're concerned that Nebraskans or Americans or civic organizations or political parties or candidates are encouraging voters to vote. You're, you're concerned that they're letting people you know about vote. Well, when you say like that you're concerned about people encouraging vote by mail or encouraging voting, you're, 
what exactly is your concern and what exactly is your remedy that wouldn't run afoul of the First Amendment? Well, uh, you mean, they can encourage, uh, as opposed to within the, the limits of the law in Nebraska. And if the law in Nebraska is only military or you have to have an excuse, well, then then go ahead and encourage all you want, but you, you'll have to still comply with what the state of Nebraska's requirements are. Okay. Um, Senator Holcroft, last question. Senator Holcroft, do you, um, do you think it's beneficial for our democracy to perpetuate myths and misinformation about the security and integrity of our elections? To promulgate myths and mysteries, is that what you said? Myths say? and misinformation. Misinformation. Well, no, and I don't expect that I'm doing that here. Is that what you're accusing no, me of I'm asking doing? you a general question um, because I'm trying to understand if we have a clear record that there hasn't been evidence brought forward of voter fraud in Nebraska, if we have agreement that our elections are safe and secure, um, and if you haven't proposed any solutions to make improvements on the accuracy or security or safety of our elections, what is the point of this hearing? Well, I did make a number of suggestions for improving. <coughs> to remove, I would, to require a reason to vote by mail and to stop people from encouraging voters to vote by mail? Are your solutions that you've brought forward? Okay, so I had, I identified four areas. Do you want me to reread my opening statement? No, I'm trying. No, I, I listened to your opening statement. My question is, what specifically are you asking the next legislature to do to improve safety, accuracy, or security that, that isn't in place today? Well, I would like to see a, a, a higher percentage of post-election audits to verify the machines. I'd like to see spot checks of machines. And, but those things are happening today. No, they're those not two happening things today. Are happening today. No, they're not happening today. The We're only doing 10%. I would like to see more. I'd like to see 50% or 100%. Okay. We aren't doing any spot checks of machines. I mean, yes, and second, because of, of this hearing, the, the Secretary of State uh, is willing to entertain that. Okay. Uh, we have seen. Um, uh, and it's, it's interesting that we, there were questions about um, the registration software uh, power profile, which is maintained by the Secretary of State now, that when Commissioner Cruz was asked about that, he deferred to the Secretary of State to answer any questions about our statewide regis registration uh, program. Why isn't that being managed at the county level, where the people are? Why is it that the county commissioner doesn't feel comfortable ans answering <coughs> questions about the software for the statewide registration? Now, there are benefits to the statewide registration. I mean, the state-to-state the -state communication that allows us to identify when people have moved and registered in other states, that's a great benefit. Yep. It allows us to clean that up. But we still need to have, in the counties, some quality control of the registration. And I think that's been taken away. Uh, by uh, the current um, software. Okay, somewhat. so you're saying there isn't safeguards in place for voter registration in Nebraska today? That's not what I said. Okay. Why uh, in fact, I just that? outlined how this software uh, allows us to uh, to communicate with other states and yeah, remove I understand them. So, so there are that. good things, but there are some things at the county level that used to be done with you know door to door kind of checks that aren't being done anymore. Okay. And so now I think we need to take a little look at that. I'm not, I don't have the, the legislation here in front of me. Okay. That's the purpose of this interim hearing, is to identify the areas where we might bring forward the legislation in sure. the mind. Okay, well, I'll look forward to continuing the dialogue with you leading up to the next legislative session. Um, but it, it does sound like some of the issues that you are concerned about and maybe the details or nuance of that is beyond the scope of the hearing today as we're already running over, or already have 
legal safeguards in place to ensure the integrity of our registration, to ensure the integrity of the vote by mail, to ensure the integrity of in-person, to ensure the integrity of E-Day, to ensure the integrity of provisional ballots, to ensure integrity of tabulation. So I'm not, <laughs> I'm not quite sure what, what additional remedies you're, you're looking for or would need to be in place unless there is a deficiency in the existing legal safeguard that exists today. Well, I think there are some deficiencies that we need to investigate. And, I, and I've outlined them. Have I not outlined them? Well, you've indicated that you have a feeling that you'd like to see a, a larger audit or a larger recount, but you, I, I'm not aware of any information you or other testifiers have brought forward today that show that there's a need, that there's voter fraud in Nebraska. Okay, did, well, did I miss that part of the hearing when I was coming in? Well, I mean... Where is the evidence, Senator Holcroft? Beyond your feeling or, or well, my kind feelings, of general I mean, my, my understanding of the way this process is and my experience, yeah. it doesn't, that doesn't count for anything as far as being able to you know, uh, ask for an interim hearing to, to, uh, to investigate these issues. That's what this is about. Sure, but you haven't seen any evidence of voter fraud in Nebraska, or have you? Personally, I cannot point at anything right now. Okay, very good. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chair. All right. Um, before I let you go, not a lot of things hit a raw nerve on me, but you, you found one, so we're going to go back to that. Now, you talked about only a signature and that not being valid or shouldn't be what we use, but if we go back and look, when you register to vote, that's when they check your ID, they're checking the signature, they're checking the picture and the source document. So yes, are, but are, you how, can, how are you saying only a signature? I don't understand well, that. Well, when you, you can register by internet. And then so how is that person who gets your application by, by the internet seeing you at the typewriter in your face to be able to compare it to the photo ID? So the only the only thing he has to verify that is he's got a he's got a picture he's got a picture, right. but he can't compare the picture to anything. He can only compare the signature to the signature. That's his validation. Okay, well, I believe that. All right, we'll, we'll we'll double check on this, but I believe the county's got the ability to verify beyond just the internet capability. So we'll, we'll check on that to see. Well, the requirement was for photo ID, was it not? Right. So how are we using the photo in that validation? Well, but if, if a, whether it be a, a passport or a uh, driver's license correlates to a ID and a picture, aren't you doing that when you put that onto the ballot? Well, when you, compare a photo ID, you compare it to the person's face. So where is the person's face? So you're saying that if you do it online, at no point is there any source document that has a picture of a human being? When you apply. Right. When you, when you apply, apply, I mean, uh, I suppose you can set up a webcam, but it's not set up that way uh, correctly. When you apply, you, you type in to, that information. You don't have to scan in anything. You don't have to do anything. No, you don't. I mean, just type in your name and sign. Uh, in fact, I don't even. You don't even have to sign it because what they do is they they take the signature off of your your uh, driver's license, your, your signature of record. So they don't even sign when you make your application online for voter registration. Uh, uh, you're putting that on record. Um, all right. Any additional questions? Just to clarify, two tiny yes. things there. Thank you so much, Chair. But Senator Holcroft, and I'm not a tech expert either, believe, believe me, you might have uh, a lot more on me there, but I do think that maybe it would be beneficial for us all to just kind of maybe continue the conversation and walk through the process because I'm, I'm not sure that we got it quite right on the record today for how online registration works and then casting ballot works after that because 
there are requirements in place if you do the online registration for how you show and utilize your ID in subsequent elections. So I, I think that I, I just want to make sure that, that we're all clear. And, and we took that up in the voter ID um, implementation legislation together, and, and that was also in place, additional safeguards in, in regards to ensuring identity after, before voter ID and when Nebraska um, adopted online voter registration. So um, I do just want to bring that point up. And again, two things. I, I'm not aware of any evidence in Nebraska at this time for widespread voter registration fraud or impersonation. And it sounds like perhaps you're not either. Um, and if there are those issues happening, there, there are significant criminal penalties in place. If somebody were to try and register to vote in my name or my kid's name or what have you, I mean, that's a, that's a serious crime. There's, all, there's a whole other area of criminal law um, out there to, to address these areas of, of fraud as well. Would, would you agree with that? Oh, yes. But, but what are you saying? Are you telling me that I, as a senator, I cannot bring forward and ask these kind of questions at an interim hearing? You, you can bring forward any idea you wish. That, that, that's absolutely you're right. My, my question to you in terms of how you utilize your platform and power is if you're asking the committee to take up an issue without evidence and that's already addressed in other aspects of the law, what is the point of the hearing? Well, it's to discuss those issues to see if there is evidence or... But you have brought none to this committee And today. it's not my role to bring the evidence. I brought testimony to, to explain, and we had people ask questions to try to pull out. And I think there's enough uh, areas of concern or questions here that we, we can take it further as far as what... Um, the legislation we want to bring forward. Okay, very good. Thank you so much. All right, going back to the issue before, some of this, it, it didn't make sense to me why it would be that way. So if I understand it correctly, and I'm trying to double check here, that when you physically go and provide your photo ID, when you get your, your driver's license, that's, that's your ID, what you're doing later is you're simply taking that driver's license <clears throat> number and you're correlating that to what's already on file. So the picture is still there. So the only way you could do that is if you had all the information to include that driver's license number and you were trying to take someone's ID, essentially. I, I don't disagree with that, but what is the, f the function of a photo ID is to, uh, to compare that ID to the in-person face of the person that you're validating. And when you're on a computer, there's no way to do that. If you go to the commissioner's office or you go to the ballots, they ask you for a photo ID, they look at it, they look at your face, and right. then they do, do they do the valuation. When you register for, for, for a mail-in ballot, when you register for uh, voting, there's no comparison, if you do it online, there's no comparison between your photo ID and your actual face. So who is, how do you verify who's typing this information is? All they have to have is, is they have to steal your ID card. I mean, your, uh, your, your driver's license card. It's got all the information you need to register for a vote, to vote. And, and you think that, they, that, that someone would do that, knowing full well that's a felony offense. So that means go to jail, don't ever own a gun, don't get a vote, just to get a vote. Well, I mean, it's possible. So okay. that's why we're, and if it if this committee doesn't feel that's a problem, uh, then well, no, I'm just trying to make sure we, we get, you know, we're, we're talking about <clears throat> voter security in the process, and and I want to make sure because that's still a very raw issue with me. The 14 hours that we had to debate <laughs> voter ID, and it may not be perfect, but it's a lot better than we were before we had voter ID. Certainly is at the polls and at the end voting in person. But if you're not voting in person, then a photo ID is, it's only, it's only the signature that's the valid, validating entity. Last question. Well, I swear. I swear last question. All right. I this swear. is your last. I swear. <laughs> I swear. And Senator Holcroft is always so generous and gracious with his time and dialogue with the committee. But Senator, 
and, and this came up in a, a previous discussion about poll watchers and observers who are keeping tabs on um, what's happening at the election office and at the polling places. The, the right that is sacrosanct is, is for the voter themselves. And do you think the government knows better about how voters want to vote? Shouldn't we leave it up to the individual voter to decide how they wish to vote? And, well, yes. But okay. why and how, That's are, all we, I need how, how are we how are we violating that with poll watchers? N no, we're not. My my question is if fifty percent of Nebraskans want to exercise their their right to vote by voting by mail. I mean, doesn't 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 that decision belong to the voter themselves? You're saying that those voters are all wrong and that the government knows better and that we should require everybody to vote in person? The only reason those people are allowed to vote by mail is because that's the way the statute is written in the state of Nebraska. Now, I am looking at that and saying I, I, I don't think that's necessarily, and I have a number of constituents who say uh, they don't think that should be the way it is. They think it ought to be by you need to have a valid excuse for that. That's the way it ought to be. And so that's, I'm representing that opinion uh, okay. going forward. Very good. Thank you so much. Thank All you. right. We need to wrap up, or we're going to be sitting here to start the next one in a matter of a few minutes here. So with that, I'm we need in, to read I'm in. I'm not involved in that. <laughs> we're going to read in some numbers here. <clears throat> as far as for opponents, we had 95. Opponents, we had four. We had five in the neutral. With that, we will close the hearing on LR 357, and we'll see everybody back.